They're doing it again. The Americans are using Al-Qaeda to do their dirty work. You remember Al-Qaeda, the group that's credited with carrying out 9-11, the group that the American government has supposedly been at war with for two decades? That group? Well, according to an investigation by the AP, the U.S. is turning a blind eye to its allies, Saudi Arabia and the UAE, cutting deals with Al-Qaeda militants to fight the Houthis in Yemen. Al-Qaeda militants are effectively on the same side as the Saudi-led coalition and, by extension, the United States, reports the AP. The report adds that coalition-backed militias actively recruit Al-Qaeda militants, or those who were recently members because they're considered exceptional fighters. You see, Yemen is where Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is based. This is the branch of Al-Qaeda considered most dangerous to American national security because it actively plots attacks against the U.S. For a while, the U.S. was at war with them, launching drone strikes that you might remember had a bad habit of hitting Yemeni weddings and funerals. But then the Houthis took over large swaths of territory in Yemen and deposed the U.S.-backed government in 2015. Since then, a Saudi-led coalition of Middle Eastern countries supported supported and armed by the U.S. and U.K., has been bombing the Houthis. Even though the Houthis are a local and organic Yemeni movement made up mostly of Zaydi Shias that formed in the 1990s, the U.S. and its Saudi and Emirati allies view them as an Iranian proxy and have prioritized defeating the Houthis over defeating Al-Qaeda, with the Saudi-led coalition going a step further and using Al-Qaeda militants to fight the Houthis. As a result, Al-Qaeda's numbers in Yemen have risen from 6,000 to 8,000. Of course, this is part of a long-standing pattern. The U.S. and its regional allies have a nasty habit of using religious fundamentalists against American adversaries in the Middle East. They use the Muslim Brotherhood against Arab nationalists and communists in the 1950s. They use the Mujahideen against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan in the 1980s. And then some of the people who fought alongside the Mujahideen, like Osama bin Laden, later established Al-Qaeda. There's also a history of Yemen's Saudi-backed authoritarian leader, Ali Abdullah Saleh, using Salafis, including veteran fighters from the Afghan Jihad, against Yemeni socialists in the 1990s. In fact, the threat from these Salafis is what led to the rise of the Houthis to defend Zaydi areas in the first place. Fast forward to 2011, and the U.S. used al-Qaeda-linked Islamists in Libya against Gaddafi. But perhaps the most important to al-Qaeda's resurgence was when the U.S. used al-Qaeda-linked jihadists in Syria against Assad, which contributed to the growth of al-Nusra, the Syrian al-Qaeda affiliate, which is al-Qaeda's largest formal affiliate in history, according to Brett McGurk, the U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for the Global Coalition to Counter ISIS. Idlib province is the largest al-Qaeda safe haven since 9-11. And now it's happening again in Yemen, this time against the Houthis, which looks more like a war against children. As a result of what's considered the world's worst humanitarian catastrophe, a Yemeni child dies every 10 minutes. Around 3 million Yemeni women and children are acutely malnourished, and another 400,000 children are fighting for their lives. Most shocking of all, an estimated 113,000 children died in 2016 and 2017 from extreme hunger or preventable disease. The U.S. isn't just a bystander, it's an active participant, providing the Saudis with billions of dollars in weapons, U.S. advisors, logistical support, intelligence for targets to bomb, assistance in enforcing a starvation siege. So when Saudi Arabia bombed a school bus in August, killing more than 40 children on a field trip, the U.S. was complicit. The Saudi-led coalition defended the bombing, calling it a legitimate military operation. And the U.S. refused to condemn it, even as it became apparent that the massacre was carried out with U.S. bombs, which you could add to the why do they hate us file. In other words, if the United States of America and the United Kingdom tonight told King Salman this war has to end, it would end tomorrow. Because the Royal Saudi Air Force cannot operate without American and British support. The horror show in Yemen and the U.S. de facto alliance with Al-Qaeda should be front page news. It should be a major scandal with wall-to-wall -wall coverage. But the corporate media prefers to obsess over theatrical bullshit while babies literally starve to death. That's not an exaggeration. Over the course of a year, MSNBC aired zero stories on Yemen versus 455 stories on Stormy Daniels. And in all of 2017, MSNBC ran 5,000% more stories on Russia than on Yemen. MSNBC host Chris Hayes says that stories his network ignores go uncovered usually because they're a 
palpable ratings killer. But I refuse to believe that people would change the channel if they saw the hollow faces of Yemeni children, if they saw the destruction there, if they were informed of the US government's role in perpetuating it. I'd like to believe they'd care. At the very least, the fact that US policy is strengthening Al Qaeda would certainly outrage them. Also, what about the war in Syria? MSNBC had no problem joining all the other major outlets in covering Syria, especially when the opportunity for US military intervention arose. Was that a ratings killer? What explains relentless coverage of Syria versus the blackout on Yemen. Obviously, Yemen is ignored because the US and its allies are responsible for the majority of the suffering and because it benefits US geopolitical interests, as well as the profits of the weapons companies selling the bombs. And there's no end in sight. The fine print in this year's defense appropriations bill stipulates that the war in Yemen will continue indefinitely. So the question becomes, how many more babies have to starve to death? How many more school buses full of children have to be obliterated? How much stronger does Al Qaeda in Yemen have to get before the media gives enough of a shit to inform Americans about what their government is really doing there?